Did you know that there are vast meadows of grass similar to your lawn living underwater? These plants, called seagrass, live in coastal areas throughout the world in water that is shallow enough for the sunlight to reach the bottom where they're rooted. Unlike seaweed or macroalgae, seagrasses produce flowers, seeds, pollen, and roots. We asked Laura Reynolds, a graduate student at the University of Virginia, about the different parts of the seagrass species eelgrass. Okay. Okay. Oh, so if you go down to the bottom, <laughs> the sediment surface would be about right here. So all of this is underground. Um, this part right here is the, what we call the rhizome. You think of it as sort of a horizontal stem. These little hair-like structures are the roots. And then... Yeah. Most of these plants have somewhere between four and six leaves. The youngest leaves are here in the middle, and the oldest leaves that have been around for the longest are here on the outside. Seagrasses form ecosystems that play an important role in the marine environment. They provide habitat and protection from predators for small fish and invertebrates, and are a nursery ground for baby fish. They also serve as a food source for many critters. Sometimes they're directly eaten by fish and mammals like manatees, but more often, tiny plants and animals that attach to blades of seagrass, called epiphytes, are food for aquatic organisms. In addition, many critters that rely on seagrasses, such as crabs, are food for people too. So seagrasses are important to local economies that depend on seafood. Seagrasses also have a positive impact on their surrounding physical environment. They can improve water clarity by trapping particles that are suspended in the water, and they can slow down wave energy, helping to prevent shoreline erosion caused by wave action. Unfortunately, seagrasses are largely experiencing a trend of decline worldwide. Scientists have attributed this trend to poor water quality caused by pollutants present in runoff. Specifically, nutrients and sediments from human activities on the land are washed into coastal aquatic systems in excess quantities, causing the water to become cloudy or turbid. Murky water means that sunlight can't penetrate very deep. When the water becomes so turbid that the sun's rays can no longer reach the bottom where seagrasses are rooted, they die because they can no longer photosynthesize. Scientists throughout the world are studying seagrasses to learn more about how they live and why they're dying. Researchers are also working on developing ways to bring back seagrasses to areas where they once thrived. One such restoration project is taking place in coastal Virginia's Hog Island Bay. There, a team of scientists were able to successfully bring back large meadows of the species eelgrass to an area damaged by disease and storms by broadcasting millions of seeds over hundreds of acres of water. Dr. Karen McGlathery, a scientist on the restoration team, describes the project's success. And one of the reasons it's so successful is that the water quality in this region is, is still very, very good. And so this, the, rest, the natural recovery didn't happen for so long, largely because it was just too far away for seeds to get here. But we're just sort of helping nature along, and um, it's been really, really successful. While poor water quality still limits the success of restoration in many regions, the Virginia story is proof that with good water quality, seagrass can make a comeback.